Okay, let's go ahead and continue with logarithms and we want to take a look at solving logarithmic equations and also the natural log of x which we know now to be the log base e of x and written this way. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump to solving logarithm equations and what we're going to take a look at are what are the two basic methods by which you go ahead and solve logarithmic equations. Now, there's basically two methods here and I'm going to go ahead and specify log base a here and log base a so that we recognize the fact that you have to have the common base for the logarithms on either side of the equation and if that's the case and then by using your rules or your laws of logarithms to simplify the left and the right hand side of the equation into one single logarithm and you can compare it this way then of course what you know is that all we need to do then is go ahead and compare the square and the triangle because if we know that if these two are equal then of course these two have to be equal as well now this situation here is of course when you have a logarithm only on one side of the equation and something on the other side which is not a logarithm then of course what we do is we go ahead and use its equivalent exponential form and then we can go ahead and solve for whatever is in here because if we wanted to solve for this, then we've already done so. Okay, so we'll, we'll get back to this question a little bit later. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the examples when we want to go ahead and solve for x. And I'm not going to look at this example because I think this is pretty straightforward. We've already done this with regards to logs and going between logarithms and exponentials, those two forms. So let's just focus on method number one. Now let's say, for example, you have the natural log of d is equal to 2x, two, 2 natural log of x plus 1. If you wanted to solve for x, what would you do? Well, in this particular case, notice again that what we want to try to do is we want to try to get it so that you have a log base, well, in this case, is base e, right? You want to get the natural log of something equal to the natural log of something. We've already got the natural log of d on this left-hand side. We need to combine these here using our laws of logarithms into a single natural log. So what that means then is I can go ahead and say that this is the natural log of x squared because we can use, uh, I believe it was law number three, to rewrite this as the natural log of x squared. And we know that this here is the same thing as the natural log of e because this is the same thing as log base e of e. So now I can, actually, now I can then go ahead and use, I think it was law number one, to combine these two into a single expression that says the natural log of e x squared. Okay, so there you go, you're taking all of the, the string of logarithms and you're combining it into a more single, into a single complex logarithm using your law of logarithms. And notice now we have this situation. And since we have the logarithms on the left and the right hand side of the equation, both having the exact same base, we can then just go ahead and take a look at the arguments and say the arguments have to be the same. So if that's the case, you can go ahead and solve for x using usual methods of algebra. Now let's take an extension of this same equation and look at what happens when you just add the brackets. Okay, so notice that this looks almost exactly the same thing here except for we have the brackets. And what this means then is that the natural log is actually being applied to the x plus 1. So now if that's the case, this is going to be a much simpler problem because of the fact that we don't have to use so many rules, laws of logarithms, to express this as a single logarithm because it already is a single logarithm. And we just need to go ahead and say then that the natural log of d is equal to the natural log of the quantity x plus 1 squared. Okay, and if that's the case, then we know for a fact that d has to be equal to x plus 1 quantity squared. Again, you use your algebraic rules to solve for x. So, there you go. That's how we go ahead and solve uh, logarithmic, logarithmic equations using either method 1 or method 2. Okay, now this is a question that I want you to go ahead and think about for class. If you have, let's say for example, an equation a is equal to b, could be whatever you want it to be, A is whatever you want it to be, B is whatever you want it to be, so long as you know that they're equal. And you perform the same operation to both sides of the equality, will you maintain the equality? Okay, so I want you to think about that, think of all the different kinds of 
operations that you have that you could apply to A and B on both sides of, the, of that particular equation and answer that question and let's see what you come out with. Okay, so there you go. Solving logarithm equations and making sure that we are familiar with the notation for the natural log of x, which of course has all the same properties as any other logarithm that we have. Okay, so give me your best shot. Let's see how you do. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.